Hi everyone, welcome to our webinar. Uh, today's webinar come launches for one of the most uh, innovative business English uh, proficiency assessment, the AI English Pro. Uh, hello, uh, Sujit, am I audible? Uh, yes, I am audible. So Neha, uh, can you hear me? Uh, yes, Sujit, I think there is some issue. Oh, can I start now? Uh, just a minute, Sujit. Okay. Uh, yes, Sujit, you can start. Okay, great. Let me know when you can see my screen. Yes, Jit, we can see. Perfect. So, uh, hey. good morning to everyone. Uh, I'm Sujit. Uh, I'm the co founder and uh, CTO at Interview Mocha. And uh, today uh, I'll be walking you through uh, one of our new product launches, which we call as artificial intelligence. Uh, English proficiency uh, test. So uh, before uh, creating any particular product uh, from a product management perspective, you need to make sure that you uh, understand the problems really well. So uh, in your company uh, or as you're working, uh, one of the question you have to ask first, uh, and this is the survey we did with our customers, are you facing these challenges? Uh, and the, and the, the, these are the major problems, the challenges which they were facing. Uh, the client and senior stakeholders report that uh, your team members lack listening skills. Uh, in a project, there are only a few members who can converse confidently with the customer. And team members are unable to express status updates and apprise customers through proper emails. So are these challenges, uh, when, when we talk to our customers, uh, major challenges they are facing when it comes to uh, the communication or the soft skills with respect to the English language. Uh, this were the three major challenges which came out uh, repeatedly uh, across all our customers. So uh, you can also make a note of this right now. Uh, if you are facing any of these challenges uh, or all of this, right, we would be more than happy to connect with you uh, even after this webinar and have a discussion with you. And uh, while we were doing this survey with our customers, uh, we also came across a report by Cambridge University, which was mainly targeted with the IT and ITS companies around the world. Uh, and uh, the survey, what the what the Cambridge University did is, what percentage of staff have the English skills needed to succeed in their role? And the outcome was, English problem is a global crisis. Uh, there are some key roles like sales and uh, customer service, uh, or any kind of a customer front ending role, where uh, it's very important to have uh, good English speaking. And over there also, almost. 30% of their staff lacked the required skills to succeed in their role, English skills specifically. So is this problem solved today? That's what we tried to uh, indulge into it. So we went on studied uh, CFR, which is a common European framework for uh, of references for languages. Uh, we studied Pearson Versant, which is one of the most successful uh, English uh, tests uh, in the world, almost administered to 350 million candidates worldwide till now. And we understood the structure. Uh, there were some shortcomings and the challenges, what we found out, the test is too lengthy, a couple of hours, uh, uh, a little bit complex, right? Lacks the new age technologies in it. So we thought, can we create a solution to address one, the challenges faced by the customer, which is also a global crisis. And second, there is a solution in the market, but can we do something better? Can we make something innovative, right? And this was the basis of our origin and our structure 
which we came up with called as AI enabled English Pro. So we came up with an assessment, which is artificial intelligence enabled, focused on checking a candidate speaking, writing, reading and listening skills. And it's fun. That's what we'll see how it's fun and it's quick, only 30 minutes. So within 30 minutes, you can gauge candidates speaking, writing, reading and listening skills. Uh, to make it quick, uh, that is 30 minutes and to make it fun, we had to use a lot of, or we have to develop a lot of, uh, we have to use a lot of AI and develop our own NLP models uh, to do the analysis of the video questions, to the analysis of the writing skills of a person and understand their sentiments when they're speaking, when they're writing, their grammar, their vocabulary, their spelling, uh, oral fluency, their email writing skills and the face recognition. So uh, a lot of uh, AI and NLP models being used to make sure uh, the things are accurate, to make sure the things uh, are quick and to make sure the evaluation is very innovative in nature. So uh, in the next uh, 15 to 20 minutes, I'm going to explain you uh, how is this test structure and walk you through a real demo of how this works and uh, we can definitely have a good question and answer session at the end to really if you have any questions it can be a very basic question hey what is ai what is nlp right and how you're doing this and i'll be more than happy to answer all of your questions so the first uh, task uh, in the test is speaking where we ask a candidate to provide an introduction to yourself along with three achievements in the last two years. The candidate needs to speak for a minute uh, in front of the camera. So we capture the human face, we capture his voice, uh, and there's a particular task being given to him to just understand the context of what he's speaking. This is the task one, which is the speaking section, followed by task two, which is a formal letter writing, Write a letter to your reporting manager stating the reason behind the delay in the completion of a project. So he has to actually write a proper letter uh, or an email uh, to his reporting manager stating the reason behind the delay uh, in the completion of the project. Expected is he should at least write 100, 150 words uh, for our NLP model to really start working. Reading, uh, we ex uh, this is a, a simple section based on uh, the American English for GMAT or a GRE examination, uh, where we have a closed test, a sentence correction, and reading comprehension. And uh, all the content for every question, we try to make it specific to business English. So the paragraphs or the sentences are being picked up from uh, the reports of Gartner and McKenzie. So this is a very specific business English assessment. Uh, this particular section, uh, we expect candidates to really score very high, at least 70%, uh, because uh, apart from the first two sections, which are more on speaking and writing, this checks your basic English, uh, which you have been practicing like from your uh, school days or right from your uh, undergrad uh, days. So you should be really good in this. And listening. Uh, again, uh, we play an audio, which is again based on an American English. So you listen to the audio and based on that audio, we ask you some questions. So if you're not very attentive uh, while listening to the audio, you may go wrong. So this is actually to understand, do you understand uh, for how good as a listener you are? And do you understand American accent? So these are the four sections. Once the assessment is completed, uh, within five to 10 minutes, system generates a report which is something kind of, this is an output. So here, if you see, there's a candidate called as Ryan Walker. He has scored 83% and completed the assessment in 77% uh, of the allotted time. And uh, there are four sections and below are the enabling skills. Before going to the next part of the presentation, we'll quickly go and see the demo. How does the product work? Uh, 
Uh, Neha, are you able to uh, see the screen uh, uh, with the with the browser now, with the browser window? Uh, yes, Suji. Perfect. So this is a candidate Harshit, and he has scored almost eighty three percent. And this are the below skills. Now, in speaking, he has scored seventy five out of hundred. Let's understand what was there in the speaking section. So I'm going to his questions. I'm going to the speaking section. And the question is, please look at the camera and speak into the microphone while giving an introduction of yourself. Provide an introduction to yourself along with three achievements in the last two years. You should ideally speak for a minute. The timer at the bottom of the screen would help you track the, keep track of your progress. Start speaking at the end of the countdown. Best of luck. So let's see how this candidate has recorded his uh, video. Hi, my name is Harshad Manglani and I'm a third year student at the Pune Institute of Computer Technology. I've maintained an average pointer of 9.4 out of 10. In April 2020, I was selected as a Microsoft student partner, uh, which is a global campus ambassador program by Microsoft. As a part of this program, I've, I've completed all the milestones that are in the program. I've also been uh, fortunate enough to you know, have access to all Microsoft technologies, which has enabled me to learn um, basic, mostly about Microsoft Azure. I, I can deploy uh, applications and databases using the cloud. I, I have some basic knowledge about how cloud computing works. And I've also... So uh, here the candidate was asked to speak for a minute. Uh, he has spoken about his achievements, about what he's doing, uh, which undergrad uh, college and university goes to, uh, his uh, engagement with the Microsoft uh, Global Student Program, and in that he has learned Azure. So he's talking a lot of good things. And on those parameters, the speaking model uh, has rated him on his grammar, his oral fluency, sentiment analysis, and his vocabulary. And the score is 75% uh, out of 100. And this is what we see over here. At the same time, let's go to the writing section. So in the writing section, the candidate is asked to write a letter to the reporting manager stating the reason uh, behind the delay in completion of the project. And he has written a letter since he is still uh, going to the, uh, still uh, appearing for like going through an education program. Uh, definitely his writing skills are not uh, top notch. So uh, he's uh, written a letter the way, uh, email, a uh, way a undergrad student would write. Hello, sir, uh, hope you're doing well. This is a follow-up email to inform you about the delay in our project. Firstly, I would like to apologize for the delay. The problem occurred because I was wrongly assumed a few things, right? So his writing skills are not that great. And on the writing, that's the reason he has scored only 65%. Uh, and these are the enabling skills, grammar, letter length, sentiment analysis, spelling, and vocabulary. This was a, one candidate. And uh, at the same time, just to do a, some comparison, I will show you one more candidate who has scored very high in writing, right? And let's see uh, what is the writing score over here. So here in the writing, again, because this person is more experienced, uh, write a letter to a reporting manager stating the reason behind the delay in the completion of a project. This person has written, hi, hi Vishal, I hope you're staying safe and healthy. I would like to update you on the progress of the Universal Studio project so far. We have completed 12 of the 15 modules. We have got sign off from the customer for 10 modules. Two modules are under UAT. Three modules are work in progress. Tim is working hard to complete the remaining three modules, but due to COVID-19 and work from home challenges, we see delay of four to six weeks in completing the project. There are internet issues, coordination issues. Hope you understand the challenges we are facing and communicate the same to the customer. Can we have a customer call and explain the challenges? Stay safe, stay healthy. So while the con maybe the letter length is uh, not very big, but it's written very crisply and uh, with a better English. So 
the overall score over here for the writing that's why it's gone to 85 percent right so this is more around speaking and writing as a section and then when we go to uh, reading uh, this is interesting uh, this candidate has got 90 percent this candidate has scored very less in writing has scored only 13 percent so what is reading all about now when we go to reading you will find very simple reading comprehension again every paragraph as i told you is based on a lot of business material from gartner and mckinsey so this particular paragraph talks about geek economy this paragraph talks about the digital business right this paragraph talks about information as an asset and early adoption and uh, something on gartner uh, prediction so uh, the candidate really needs to have a good understanding for answering this question then there is something on sentence correction uh, to check how the person is creating a right structure of a sentence based on american english and then there is a simple close it where there's a paragraph with a lot of blanks and the candidate needs to just fill in those blanks all right uh, with the right keywords given at the bottom right so we expect candidate to score really high in this section to prove that their basic skills in english uh, are really good and the last section is listening you're uh, you have to listen to an audio uh, this particular audio clip is about the hype cycle um, it's a two minutes uh, 20 seconds audio we'll, we'll listen to this audio now in this video i want to talk to you about the gardner hype cycle this is a model that was developed by the gardner group to understand how technologies kind of come on the scene and then what happens to them as they eventually go through a pattern to become a mature technology this model is usually depicted by having two axes one where we have time along the x-axis and visibility uh, or sometimes utility uh, along the y-axis so now if you listen to this audio for two minutes carefully and uh, then you answer some questions this is again something which happens in a uh, kind of an ILTS exam where you listen to the uh, audio clips. Uh, if you're not good with understanding an American accent or if you're not good and uh, you're not very attentive, then you may not score good in this section as well. So this is the fourth section, which is uh, listening. Uh, and the overall report looks something like this. So this is uh, uh, the high level structure of our English proficiency uh, test. Uh, reading, uh, listening, reading, speaking, writing, using a lot of AI to evaluate the speaking section, uh, reading section with a lot of AI based NLP models, and then uh, for speaking and writing, and then for reading uh, something which is based on uh, uh, US uh, American English, uh, based on the GMAT and GRE uh, examination and listening and audio clip where you have to be very attentive and some questions on top of that. The entire content, as I said, is completely uh, based on uh, some transcripts or some passages from Gartner and McKenzie to give a touch of a business English, right? So this is the uh, major uh, focus of the AI English Pro. Any any questions anybody has right now on whatever I showed as a demo or on the structure would be more than happy to answer it now uh, before moving on to the next part of the presentation. Uh, yes, Sujit, there are three questions. Uh, so first is uh, Nishant is asking how accurate is the NLP model? So currently our NLP model uh, has a, a accuracy of almost uh, uh, 70 uh, to 75 percent and uh, we are working on our NLP models and within a couple of months by the end of this quarter we are expecting that accuracy would go to 85 to 90 percent uh, and in NLP uh, 85 to 90 percent is a very very good accuracy because at the end you're saving a lot of human efforts to evaluate 
somebody's communication skills or somebody's writing skills. It's all automated, right? So a 10% drop in accuracy may be there, but uh, you can compensate that with the amount of time you're saving for the uh, evaluator or the reviewer. All right. Uh, so just second question. This is an interesting question Sam has asked. Uh, so can the English Pro test be customized? Like can uh, anybody add their own uh, scenario and uh, time setups? Uh, well, interesting question. So uh, I would answer this question in my presentation uh, uh, in, in next five minutes. Uh, is that fine? Yeah, I think that should be. Uh, so Chit, another question was uh, for the listening model, the audio clip that you just played. So is there a way to uh, slow down the audio clip? Does the candidate have that option? Candidate doesn't have an option to slow down the audio clip, but the candidate has an option to replay the audio clip. So he can replay the audio clip maybe for a couple of times and that is in the settings. So you can have an option for a candidate to replay the audio clips maybe two times or three times if you want and you can give him maybe a five minutes to answer all the questions after listening to that audio clip. So within that five minutes, he can maybe replay it for a couple of times. Okay. Uh, and also, Adrian has asked uh, how to access AI English Pro, how to access the test. Uh, so for, uh, for this moment, uh, I would say it's very simple. Just drop an email to support at interviewmocha.com and we would be ha happy to must understand your requirement and then immediately provide you the access. All right. And uh, another interesting question. Uh, this is like, what is the difficulty level of the questions asked? So currently this particular test, I would say is with an intermediate uh, uh, difficulty uh, level. So uh, anybody who is uh, more uh, in, 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 a, in a job scenario, uh, with an experience of anywhere between uh, one year to uh, five years experience can be really this test can be administered and you'll get good results we can even increase the difficulty level of this test on a higher side or even reduce the difficulty level uh, by producing a different content okay uh Sushit, we can move to the presentation thank you nia so some basic questions I just wanted uh, in today's webinar to get answered. So uh, whenever I have, uh, I've talked to a lot of people or a lot of customers, a basic question customers ask is what is NLP, right? What is natural language processing? And this is the definition from Wikipedia. Uh, it's a subfield of linguistic, computer science, information engineering and artificial intelligence concerned with the interactions between computers and human natural languages in a particular how to program computers to process and analyze large amounts of natural language data. I never understood this definition. And I guess uh, that must be the same reaction uh, the audience over here is having. So it's very complex. For me, I have a simple definition which I like about NLP and which I usually follow is this. Natural language processing on NLP is broadly defined as an automatic manipulation of natural language like speech and text by software. So it's automatic manipulation of natural language like speech and text. So in our speaking section, we have speech. In our writing section, we have a text and we are doing an automatic manipulation of these two natural languages through our NLP models. And that's why we call this English Pro test as an AI based English Pro, AI enabled English Pro test where you're using a lot of NLP. I hope this uh, definition, a simpler version of uh, definition would really help you uh, in understanding what we are trying to do in our product and overall, what is NLP? So this is the question what uh, Sam had asked and I usually get this question when I talk to the customers or when I give a demo, can I change the questions? Can I change the uh, structure of the test? Can you change the structure of the test? No. Can you change the questions in the test? Yes. Uh, then how would you change the questions? So I've created a sample scenario, Sam, for you to understand uh, uh, how to change the questions. So I've taken a sample job role uh, of L1 tech support. 
okay and here the speaking section uh, you can ask a question a sample scenario where customer is annoyed with the product he, he calls l1 tech support and he says yeah, i'm really annoyed with the product and now you need to speak the candidate needs to speak for a minute to pacify the customer right and the way he speaks the way he pacifies uh, we evaluate his communication skills we evaluate his linguistic skills on that parameters similarly writing or write a response to a customer ticket stating the reason behind the delay in solving the issue customer is facing your customer is facing an issue and he's very annoyed and already you have a sample ticket received from a customer so if you have a sample ticket like that just put that ticket over there in our test and ask uh, the candidate hey you have got the sample ticket how are you going to respond to it now the way he responds to the sample ticket you will get to know is he good in this job in the reading section we can have we can have random questions from pool of hundreds of calibrated questions on sentence correction uh, different reading comprehensions and the closed test and finally is a listening this is interesting as well you can have an audio recording of your customer calling you uh, in your to your support center in the past you can put that audio recording which may be a couple of minutes or five minutes and create answers on top of that and share with us and we'll put that audio recording and those questions in the listening so you can completely change the questions right from speaking writing reading listening make the assessment make the english protest very much local to your job profile here the job role is l1 tech support i hope sam I answered your question any 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 other question uh, and here we have on the content or the question uh, or the structure of the assessment uh, not right now suji okay since we are capturing the video of a candidate uh, it's very important that we follow the right security and the compliance around the world so interview moca we are hosted on the microsoft azure platform uh, with a web application firewall of cloudflare to make it highly secured we follow all the compl required compliances of iso 27001 gdpr uh, privacy shield framework uh, making sure that uh, everything is secured and up to the highest uh, compliance at the same time all the content which is provided uh, every question we make sure uh, the content is as per uh, the standards of uh, e e united states eoc that is equal employment opportunity commission so there is no bias in the questions the questions uh, really don't hurt anyone's sentiments uh, we, we make sure of all those standard parameters around security and compliance and this is more about the innovative and lovable interview moca uh, I'm, uh, we were awarded as the uh, top five innovators in testing for the year 2019 and we continue with the same kind of innovations for the 2020 as well uh, so we want to be uh, really ahead uh, in, in terms of innovation using uh, the artificial intelligence and machine learning models the nlp models into each and every assessment uh, within interview moca and giving this technology as a commodity in the hands of uh, our customers uh, Google featured interview Moca among the top recruiting tools uh, for the year 2019. And we have been awarded as the best uh, platform as a service solution hosted uh, by Microsoft Azure. Uh, we also love a lot about our customers on the G2 Crowd and Captra. We have very good reviews uh, with a very high rating. And we also love by employees uh, because that is very important as well. A very high rating on Glassdoor as well. So that's it from my side for today. Uh, I hope you, you understood and you loved uh, the way we are using artificial intelligence and NLP models to evaluate uh, the English skills or English communication skills, which uh, the world has been evaluating for last maybe uh, 100 years, right? But this time we are trying to do it in a much innovative way and in a fun way, which the candidates are going to really love in a quick 30 minutes. Thank you. Yeah, uh, Suchit, there is one more question. 
Uh, so the question is, uh, if the test report is shared to the candidate, is there a provision in the system where the candidates can challenge the reports? So at this moment, uh, uh, no, the candidates, uh, uh, we don't have a provision for the candidates to challenge the report. All right. But uh, if any candidate really feels that this is not uh, what his uh, communication skills are, uh, we would be more than happy to have a provision where he can write an email to our support and we uh, get into it and try to understand uh, what are the challenges. We could use this as a and move them up to Again, as I said, the NLP model comes with a 70% accuracy right now. So if uh, that, uh, there is a difference, then that was because of that 30% of the NLP difference. While we are trying to reach that difference, uh, there may be some challenges, but we would be more than happy to hear to a lot of candidates. Alright, and uh, for the video question, so can the candidates attempt a retake? Hey, that's that's really a good question. So, candidate can take up to three retakes, and every uh, uh, attempt he gives, he can uh, go through his own recording on his own uh, before he submits it. So, and uh, he can take three retakes, make sure that his video is perfect before uh, submitting. Okay, that is uh, okay. So Sam uh, is asking that uh, they're using Intermoca like since the past two years. Uh, so can somebody from our team uh, on board for AI English Pro? And also, is this test already a part of the existing plan? So uh, Sam, more than happy to uh, uh, onboard you. Uh, if you can just drop in your email ID uh, in the chat, in, in the question and answer window, uh, or in a private chat, and we'll definitely get back to you uh, to help you onboard quickly. Is it a part of your current plan? I have really no idea. Uh, maybe our customers can help you with that. All right, uh, Sujit, another question, so. What is the time limit for the test and can the candidates choose the sections they want to attempt first? Not, the time limit has said it's 30 minutes uh, They uh, and they cannot choose the sections they have to attempt. The, the flow is already decided. They have to follow the uh, flow which the system is having. All right. And, uh, I presume the answer is yes, but I'll still ask the question. Uh, can the test be used for university hiring and how many people can simultaneously attend the test? So uh, can the test be used for university hiring? Uh, it, it, uh, since the content is a little bit on a business side, uh, a lot of paragraphs from Gartner and uh, Mackenzie, maybe the, the students which are at undergrad may find it a little bit difficult. Everybody's English is not up to the mark. So again, it depends uh, where, where are you trying to do the university hiring in which country? Are you trying to do it in United States? Are you trying to do it in some non-English speaking nation in Europe? Or are you trying to do it in India where English uh, is spoken by uh, the majority of the population? Right, so it would really uh, matter. We need to understand the geography where you are going to administer the uh, test. Uh, and second thing, uh, the, the second question, what, what was the second question here? Uh, second question, just, yeah, second uh, question was how many people can simultaneously attempt the test? So uh, uh, for uh, every, particular, uh, every uh, minute, uh, there can be 2000 candidates who can uh, start the test together. So within a minute, 2,000, and every minute you can have uh, another 2,000 candidates starting the test. So uh, if you ask for a concurrency for a minute, uh, it's almost uh, uh, 2,000 per minute. And if you ask for a concurrency for, a, for an hour, maybe uh, because it's no more a concurrency, it's distributed, uh, they can be almost uh, around 60,000 candidates who can appear for this test. But within a minute, you can have 2,000 starting at a single moment within a single minute. All right, uh, Joshua has a question. Uh, so in regards to providing uh, your own questions, what does it look like from a recruiter perspective in uh, adjusting questions or scenarios? 
So it's not more from a recruiter perspective. We need to understand your uh, job role. So if you can help us with your job role and what exactly you're trying to do, we can help you, our team can help you to uh, edit or tweak the question with respect to that job role. So it's not with the perspective of a recruiter, it's more from a perspective of a job role. If your job role is pretty standard, you can use our standard questions, but if your job role with respect to a particular tech support and you want to upload your own audios, you want to upload your own scenarios, then we need to discuss with your hiring managers uh, and have a, a call with them, understand uh, how, how they have been hiring in the past, and then we can really uh, take some content from your existing past data and help you create a customized uh, test. Okay, uh, Sujit, another interesting question. So how is uh, AI English Pro different from Pearson Versant? So, uh, one thing is uh, I won't comment uh, how it's uh, different. I would only comment uh, how uh, this is, I would say our AI English Pro test is more focused on, as I told, using a lot of technology, uh, using artificial intelligence and NLP models to make it first innovative. So that may be the first big difference. And second thing is uh, with uh, Interview Mocha uh, AI English Pro, uh, you can change the content, right? You can make the content with respect to a particular job role and uh, the structure is more important for us and the technology we are using is more important. The content we are saying can be customized as per the requirement of the customer. I would say with uh, Pearson, I've really no idea uh, how, how easy uh, it is to customize the test. But with Interview Mocha, you have that flexibility to customize the content while the framework and the technology remains very innovative. With your own content, you can create your own high-performing uh, test, which your candidates would love to solve because that's more related to the job and just not something English. But with this English, which is required for that job with the exact scenarios. All right. And another question is, so how can the recruiters or the hiring managers make sure that the candidates are not cheating? Simple thing, uh, you, you uh, definitely, uh, they cannot cheat in the uh, speaking section because in the speaking section, the candidate's video itself is visible, right? Uh, so uh, that is one. And for the remaining part, or remaining other sections, we have something called as an image proctoring and uh, you'll get all the proctoring details. And throughout the test, we make sure that we captured the uh, images of the candidate, right? Uh, so for this particular thing, uh, maybe the image proctoring is not enabled, but wherever the image proctoring is enabled, all the images are captured over here and you can have the look at the proctored data. And even in the summary, you will get to know uh, if they moved out of the test window, which we call as a window violation. Uh, if they moved out of the time, how much time were they outside for every question, that is a time violation. How many images were captured and how many images were violated. And we also have amazing flags to tell you whether uh, the whether he really moved out of the test window, would somebody help him, but was, was it within a tolerable limit? So we have a fantastic proctoring algorithms written to avoid cheating and making sure that uh, the tests are taken in the most uh, uh, ideal scenarios without any cheating. Okay. Uh, so that was all. I think we took all the questions. Uh, so thank you, Sujit. Uh, thank you for wonderful presentation and uh, thank you to all the attendees. It was a pleasure having you all here. Thank you, Nia. Thank you everyone for attending the webinar. Have a great uh, day ahead. And if you're at the part of the world, have a great evening um, as well. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.